Nah, it'll come back. Screw this. 100 on LN2. Well, wait for it. Stream's back. There we go. We're back on the stream. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I'm using a USB extension cable for the camera, and you can probably guess what happened. I hit the cable. Um, well, let's see. I'm just going to tape this to the tripod so that it doesn't hit the ground again. Because I can run over the rest of the cable. I can't run over the connection. And I can't see any tape. So, Tonga, um, on LM2, that's actually completely normal for most AMD cards to be able to hit 1,600. Um, we might be able to... Actually, I might throw a Sadon on the Tonga as well. Because that would be fun. Where's the giant scissors? Uh, there we go. Fix up the body cable. This is exactly why I said I'm going to start the stream early compared to... Yeah, so Tonga on air at 1.2 volts, 1.1 gigahertz up to 1.15. Uh, Tonga on water, I'd expect 1.2 at 1.3 volts. Uh... Right, actually for the throttling trick, that's part of the volt modding I'll be doing. So, um, Tonga has a really annoying power management algorithm. That's like the main thing with the card. It throttles really hard and only has 20% power allowance. Um, but, you know, if you're volt modding it, you can just cut all of the current sensing circuitry, which is what I tried doing with the... what I tried doing with the 290X. It did not work out well. Let's just... Look at me since I'm answering questions right now. And you're so, yeah, and Mr. Guest is being stupid with a stick. So, uh, <laughs> so basically, the issue with Tonga is you have a really obnoxious power management algorithm on there that basically breaks everything. And the exposure is low right now. So, I'm going to go, I'm going to, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> um,. Yeah, but the the uh, the power management is really really easy to disable. You literally just cut a couple pins or a couple resistors on the card, and you're done. No more power management, no more throttling, not no more anything. Obviously, no warranty either. But most cards don't die if they don't die within three months. You know that that's like the usual like rate at which it'll show up that it's faulty. In three months it'll show up that it's bad and it'll die. And if it doesn't die in three months you can probably volt mod it and it'll be fine for the rest of its days unless you, you know, push way too much voltage through it. And uh, that's way too much exposure. Yeah. I wish this freaking thing could actually do auto properly. Oh, there we go. Auto actually works now. Okay, let's just run this in auto and leave it open and put it in the background. There! So now we have auto exposure, so everything's going to be nice and beautiful for the rest of the stream. Um, other than that, uh, I think you wrote something else. What? You wrote something else. I read through all of that already. It's like five minutes old now. Um, what else? Man, this is what I get for starting the stream too early. Oh well, we're fixing issues. You can come back at eight. At eight, it'll actually be interesting because that's when I promised I would start doing the vault modding. Um, okay, how about this? No. Comedy. <laughs> Hell no. Um, let's see, I don't know, tour of the room, I think? Does anybody want to see a tour? There's only three people here, I mean... There isn't much to see, it's a mess. Yeah, but people like messes. I mean, messes are interesting. I think. No, but I guess... I don't know. There's a GTX 590. There's a chiller behind me. That's a chiller. Um, I'm going to actually be testing how much power that pulls because I'm also building a tech cooler. Actually, that's one thing I did want to show. Move your... Fast. There, I need to back up for this. So I've been working on a tech cooling system. Ah, here it is. All right. So... This is a wine rack from Ikea, the, the wooden base frame here. <laughs> do a flip, can't do a flip. 
or I could try, it'll probably fail epically and I'll break something. No, but this is uh, the beginnings of my tech cooler. Right now it's only got one cooling like setup here. And so these are two uh, Silentium PC uh, Ferra coolers, um, Ferra 2 heat sinks. They're basically like Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evos, except smaller and cheaper and made in Poland. Well, made by a Polish company. Uh, I don't know if they're made in Poland. I think they're probably made in China, like everything else. Or in Taiwan. No, coolers are made in China. Taiwan is from other boards there. Um, yeah, and then under that, we actually have, so this is really cool. And I got a, like, I got a sponsorship from UK for this, like, tiny little discount. So here you can see a RAM water block. So basically the idea is the RAM water block is, so if you know what a tech, so you can't actually see this. I'll, I'll actually pull up a tech right now. Um, so a tech is what um, is a shortcut for saying thermoelectric cooler. And they look, wrong box. And they look like, this, right? This is a thermoelectric cooler. Um, it's basically a bunch of semiconductors hooked up in uh, parallel, no, in series, I think, in series, and two ceramic plates. And basically, each of these semiconductors, uh, you can sort of see them, right? So these little. I know it's not in focus, but it's not going to focus. Screw it. The cameras. It's not going to help, is if it? If you put it very close and put your hand behind it, it should. No. Nope. Your Wait, can shoot. I set the autofocus maybe? Because I don't usually use... No, focus is on auto. Then don't put it on... Mm. No, it's not going to fix it. Screw it. Nobody cares. Um, so you can sort of see them in there. Right, so those little junction things, you put current through them, and they work in two different ways. You can either put... If you put a contrast of hot and cold between them, then current starts flowing between them, like they start building up voltage. And if you hook them up in parallel and put power through them, they start getting cold on one side and hot on the other. All right. So this one is a 100 watt tech. These I've seen them made up to 280 watts. Right. And basically that tells you what is the maximum amount of heat you can pump through it at a zero delta difference between the hot and cold side. So this is 100 watts. Basically it means if I put a 100 watt CPU under this and I run this and I have a heat sink on top of this, then this uses 100 watts and cool. And then on the cold side, it stays the same temperature as the hot side. So this side. So if this side's 50 degrees, this side's 50 degrees. There's a 100 watt heat source here. This is pulling 100 watts. You have 200 watts to dissipate in the top. Um, so that's not really all that useful. Why would you want to use one of these? If you use a bunch of them, you can do something where you because at say if I had no heat input on the cold side, right? If I wasn't putting any heat into the cold side, then what would happen is it would actually get cold, like really cold. Like this can go down to I think 70 degrees below the temperature of the hot side. Right? So if this is the hot side and it's at 50 degrees and I don't have any load on the bottom of this, this is using 100 watts of power to produce minus 20 degrees on the cold side which is pretty, like, that's a lot of cooling. So obviously, if you use a bunch of them, you can set them up in such a way that each of them is, say, uh, 40 degrees, degrees on the hot side, uh, and they're all running at 100 watts, but they're sharing a heat load of, say, I'm going to be putting a 4790K under them. So what, what's going to happen is the 4790K at, like, maximum overclock is going to dump 200 watts into the water cooling loop, Right, and this 200 watts is going to get sucked out by the techs, but each of them, there's four of them, so they're each sucking 50 watts, they're each rated for 100 watts, so they're going to achieve a delta T of say 10, 30 degrees or 35 degrees at uh, 40 degrees hot side, so that gets me 5 degrees water temperature, so way better than water cooling uh, performance. Also, you can try messing around with them on regular air heat sinks. I've seen some people who actually hooked up really big ones straight to the CPU. That works pretty, that, that's pretty cool, but I didn't want to try messing around with that because that's way more complicated. And I can't find anything in the wattage range that I actually want. And this is more applicable because it's hooked up to water cooling, so I don't have to adapt it to graphics cards. I can just strap a different water block. 
Um, so that's great. Um, yeah. And basically, I'm hooking up four of these through RAM blocks and those air, air cooling heat sinks uh, to a water loop. And basically, that's going to be my 4790K system. And the 4790K for this project comes from Silicon Lottery. They gave me a nice discount for it, like 50 bucks. It's a 4.8 gigahertz uh, 4790K. And hopefully, under cold water, which is what I'll be running, it'll be able to hit 5 gigahertz. And then I'll be benching like Super Pi and stuff because I'm trying to get back into top five of Czech Republic. I'm currently in the top eight. I'm number eight in the Czech Republic, thanks to the Fury. I did a bunch of 3D marking stuff with it. So yeah, and hopefully after today, we're, I'm gonna rise a few more ranks. Though I doubt it, because it's just a 380 and nobody has any 380s uh, on hardware bot right now. But yeah, that's gonna be cool. And it's sort of coming towards the time of the volt modding. We got 10 more minutes, nine more minutes to go according to my clock. Um, I went basically through everything on the tech cooler. Yeah, because basically it's like it's like a special radiator for your water cooler and it's say if you wanted to do phase change, uh, phase change is significantly like way more efficient, first of all, because this is a tech cooler. It's going to use 400 watts. It's going to cool only 200 watts of heat and it's going to produce 600 like it's the end result is that I'm going to make a 4790K effectively use 600-ish watts of power instead of 200. So yeah, not efficient at all. But if you wanted to go with phase change, which would be like that thing over there, then that's significantly more expensive. This thing is not efficient in the slightest. This is not efficient at all. This uses like a thousand watts and it can barely keep 500 watts uh, at zero degrees. And I don't want to boot from that. Oh, damn it. It's going to try to get me to do more freaking installations. Well, in Windows installed, so that's cool. So I can actually show you now uh, how I set up Windows for benchmarking. Um, yeah, but with the face change, I'll just wrap that up while this is getting itself working. Um, with the face change, you basically get a lot more performance, but your power usage is not that much better from like what I've been looking for. And... Uh, your phase change also is bigger, way bigger, like in terms of space taken up, and it's more expensive. That That's the key difference between them. It uses less power, but it's way, way, way more expensive. So if you're only doing some like every so often uh, benching, you can just build a tech cooler and use that for your cold water. Also, if you want to do something really cool, which is what I'm thinking of doing by buying an even bigger, like if you look at this cart design, you'll notice that I'm using a really tiny reservoir. All right, but here's a trick I was thinking of. I'll just point this down so that I don't have to keep holding it up. Okay, this looks weird because uh, <laughs> it's pointed at my crawl. Anyway, just get out of that. Escape it. Just escape it. Just reset the socket system. Reset? Yeah, just start it. Yeah, start and then get me into the BIOS. So okay. press the reset. Reset and press Dell. Um, so basically, you'll be seeing that this reservoir is really, really small, but let me just unscrew it here. Um, the plan is I'm going to have one tech tower right here, right? So this one's already in position. I'm going to be building the second one after I get my tubing, which should be sometime this week. Keep tapping it. Uh, and basically the second plan is that there's going to be another tech cooler right about here in this area, right? So there's going to be two of them, tubing connecting them in series. And the idea is that I can, like, this reservoir top, right? So I can get a bigger EK reservoir, and I'm thinking of getting, like, something really tall, like the tallest one they make because then I can have a thermal buffer where I can run this with no CPU with no computer hooked up right Pull the water down to like minus 20 obviously I'm using antifreeze if you're not using antifreeze you'll get solid water in a couple seconds well in a couple minutes so running it with um, antifreeze I chill the water down to minus 20 degrees then I hook it up to the CPU and I can run benchmarks at minus 20 degrees for a couple minutes and you know you can use a sort of thermal buffering trick which is kind of cool because it lets you, like it gives you freedom for like Super Pi, SignBench and stuff that finishes quickly. Obviously SignBench on an eight core AMD is not an option because SignBench on an eight core AMD, like that's like 300 or 400 watts of heat getting dumped into your cooling loop and no amount of co like you'd need to chill out like several liters, not just one, but one liter, like to give you some idea, one liter of water can suck up four 
4,000 joules. Or, yeah, it's like 4,000 joules. 4,200 joules. Yeah, uh, per liter? Or is it kilojoules? I think it was, no, it's, no, it's per liter. liter. Yeah, 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 it's 4,200 joules, which basically means you can dump 420 watts for 10 seconds before the temperature of the water goes up one degree. So if you're benchmarking a CPU which runs on like 300 watts, right? You're running a CPU which runs to 300 or 200 watts, like an i7-4790K, uh, or even an FX8350. If the water's at like minus 20 degrees, it's gonna take the CPU a long, long time, like say a minute before it gets to minus 15 degrees with the techs still running, because the techs will only pump as much heat as the cold side allows them. They're not gonna heat it up just because more wattage is going into it, right? They're not gonna transfer heat that they can't transfer. They're gonna run as cold as they can. So they'll be pumping a little bit of heat out. So you still have that thermal buffer. They won't be pumping out 50 watts each. They'll be pumping out say 10 watts each because it's so cold, but it'll still be helping a little bit. So you can use it like a thermal buffered benchmarking system with a tech cooler. And also the tech cooler is pretty quiet because this is just regular air cooling. There's no compressor. You can get very quiet compressors, but you know, it's like, I don't know how to work with refrigerants and systems under pressure. So it's kind of risky for me to try do. So basically I'm just thinking of doing a tech cooling system and this should be finished sometimes next week, ideally. Uh, also next Saturday, I get liquid nitrogen. So that's gonna be fun. We're, I'm gonna have liquid nitrogen. Hopefully my Plasti Dip will arrive uh, and I can show you just how to like uh, liquid nitrogen on an 8320E. I wanted to do an Athlon, but the Athlon's freaking dead. So yeah, so 8320E on liquid nitrogen. So that should be fun and maybe a Phenom as well, but I'm not sure about the Phenom right now. So yeah, and this is the tight cooler. Um, I can't believe this is taking so freaking long. So let's go get Windows set up for the benchmarking today. So I have a flash stick just downloaded all the software for benchmarking today. So let's just point you at the screen. So yeah, that's my streaming monitor. So there's nothing actually happening there. Um, yeah. Okay, let's get this started. Uh, controlling two computers with two keyboards that are next to each other. Awkward as hell. Oops. No. With scissors in the way. Yeah, was okay. So let's get this. Um, I'll just boot this system up. Um, there, get it to start my hard drive. Oh yeah, and for right now, so since the last stream, the 3960X doesn't want to do five gigahertz. I don't know why it doesn't want to do them. Uh, I think it's just degraded to the point where it doesn't want to run them any longer. Um, so it's kind of like it'll still boot five point like it can boot five but it can't run them properly so i don't know benchmarking today is going to be kind of a lot of blue screens if i try to go over five gigahertz okay uh we need the new install all right so this is a fresh new install of windows 7 right now uh i recommend doing this if you're doing benchmarking just get a fresh install uh if you know how to use nt light which i've still haven't figured out how to do um, you can also strip this operating system down. Um, I'll just basically install drivers for the graphics card. The motherboard drivers, in internet drivers, I'll just use all the generics because it's an Intel network controller. Um, no antivirus, no nothing. It's a benchmarking system. Uh, the only website it's going to be accessing is Hardware Ball. Um, so this is going to start boot for ages and ages now because it's a fresh install. Um, I'm just going to get some water right now. You can still keep asking questions, you know, I'm not doing anything too complicated. Can you pour me some water as well? Do you have a cup here? Yeah, oh, the white one. one. Okay. No water for the guest. Guest deserves to die. You're going to need to go get another bottle. Oh, for fuck's sake. Mr. Guest is complaining about me not showing the Cooler Master Cup. There, one appearance of the Cooler Master Cup per stream. That's my obligation for getting a V1000 power supply for free from that. No, actually my obligation is to get the GTX 590 working. Not gonna happen today, <laughs> that, that is to say the least. Um, great, what will I call this system? 
bench. I'll just call it bench. Yeah, bench PC next. I'm the cup in the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, passwords. Everybody will know the password to build Zoe's benchmarking computer. No, they won't unless you say <laughs> it. I'm totally going to say it. I just typed a freaking damn it. That should work. Um, no hint. Oh, it re requires a hint. Well, there. Eat hint. Uh, I don't have a product key. Uh, ask me later. Oh. Time and date is not in Actually, it is. 8 p.m. Actually, the date is correct. But it's not Pacific time, U.S. and Canada. It's, uh... Nobody cares. Central Europe. Now everybody knows where I am. Why is it all UTC? Go down. There. Yeah, now everybody knows I'm in Prague. <laughs> uh, there were like, like nobody knew that before. There were like six cities on the fucking place, but you have to say Prague. No swearing on the stream. I don't think there's any kids on it, but you know, just in case. On the three people that are here. Yeah, totally. You never know. I wonder if those three people includes my own moderating of the stream. <laughs> that would suck. Big audience. Although it's 8 o'clock, so more, so the people who you promised to make sure. Yeah. I'm going to give them some time. Okay, as you can clearly see, we have Internet Explorer. We don't need that. We don't need that either. We don't need that. Um, I have a flash stick thrown in here. It probably can't see it. Yes, because we don't have USB 3.0 drivers. Fork. What? No. No swearing, damn it. I, I said fork. He totally said fork. He's Italian. You gotta forgive him. Can't pronounce fork. No, you said where I come from. So? It's not like anybody wants to stalk you. There we go. So yeah, just your usual stuff. So for today, just 15.7.1 drivers. They actually work pretty well. Um, actually, most AMD drivers work well. Just copy those over and install those first. Then we get the like mod operating system set up properly. Um, and just for an idea, at stock Windows uses like quite a lot of RAM, right? That's like 1.3 gigs on a clean install. We can get it down to like 750 megabytes before we start. Before I start benchmarking, so I'll be showing you how to do that. How to get Windows down to 750 megabytes. A very basic way to do it is to disable iRo. Why do you want it using so little RAM? Because the less RAM it's using, the less you know work it has to do. Um, so yeah, this is just going to extract. Meanwhile, I'm going to set the resolution so it doesn't look so horrible. Uh, Maximum. Apply. Oh, right. It still thinks the other monitor is plugged in. Right, so that's another problem. You don't want to run two monitors when benchmarking. It adds a light, slightly messes with your scores. And for today, I'm going to first be benchmarking 3 d Mark, the new one. So, yeah, and in case you've never installed AMD drivers, this is what they look like. You go for custom, otherwise, you get gaming involved. And in my opinion, the gaming involved application sucks. Uh, so you just take, untick that. We don't need audio. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that either. Actually, that might cause issues without it. AMD display driver. And you need the display driver. That's basically all you need. Oh, uh, wait. No. Wait. Oh, yeah. And you need Catalyst Control Center without. Catalyst, it, like you can control. Hello, Truffman. Uh, there. So, yeah. So you want Catalyst Control Center? I mean, you can use like the. I think the command line interface is included in the Catalyst Control Center install, so you do need it. There, I think there might be some way to slim the drivers down even further, but I don't know it. So I just go with this. And this is just going to install now, and I'm just going to start copying over all the benchmarks. So here we go. So let's see. So I have 3D Mark Vantage, uh, 3D Mark 11, OK. 
Uh, I'm not going to do 2001. 2001 only works on XP as far as I know. Uh, both of the sign benches, since those are my, like, those are literally my favorite benchmarks to do. Because um, I started with sign bench 11, that was like the first benchmark I did. And I'm actually pretty high up on the rankings for the 6 core sign bench, uh, if you're not looking at liquid nitrogen usage, because obviously I wouldn't liquid nitrogen my 3960X. Um, let's see. So set load. So set load is a level of detail setting program. It's basically a tweak you can run to mess with the graphics card's uh, workload. Uh, it reduces the workload. It's allowed on hardware bot. And yeah, and then there's direct 3D overrider, which also helps your th 3D scores. Um, so I have 11 sign bench. This is still installing. Oh my god, that is taking forever. Well, it is. 805 so while this is all going to be installing i'm just going to go xtu so xtu is like a really nice benchmark from intel it only works on intel cpus uh which i find annoying since i have way more amd systems than intel's super pi which is just super pi you probably know it um oh yeah hardware bought unigine so that's my favorite 3d benchmark since that's like pure gpu load uh if you're running unigine uh usually you want a four core you want a four core i7 because those have the highest inter uh like instructions per clock and you basically want a four core because if you're running uh, two or more graphics cards it does bottleneck on the cpu because it hits about 360 fps in some areas and even at five gigahertz my 3960x was causing bottlenecks so while this old stuff is installing let's go actually look at the volt modding <sighs> Uh, which means move the camera. That's the streaming system. That right there, that's what I'm streaming off of. Which everybody who's been here for, since 7 o'clock knows that I've been streaming off of that. And that's here because I forgot the charger for the laptop. So, and this is my work area for volt modding, and it's a bloody mess. I use this for making heat sinks. Uh, and that's for making heat sinks too, so I don't need that. I use these to support just, you know, it's nice. When you start having like uh, potentiometers and stuff just hanging off of your graphics cards, it's nice to have something to support them with. So I use these two paper boxes, which isn't ideal because that's basically a fire hazard. But you know, I, I don't do any like heavy duty soldering while using these. So here's the 380 heatsink on it, two 100 millimeter fans. You know, 380. You can read the review down on my blog right here. There's the link. Yeah. So you can go to my blog, there's a review of the card with the full tear down, everything. Uh, no close-ups of anything, so that sort of escaped my mind when I was making the review. And so let's just pull up the screwdriver and take this apart. So this card's actually kind of special. You don't want to take off the four screws for the heatsink, for the core heatsink and the VRM heatsink at the same time as all the other, like before the other screws, because the shroud is separate from the heatsink which is unique to this card as far as I'm concerned, because usually you can just unscrew the four screws and it pulls off the heatsink and the shroud. Um, so first you do the outer screws on this one. All right, just pull them off. Sorry if my hands are like a little bit like shaky, I don't know, nervous. <laughs> there. Aww. Nervous from streaming, so yeah, let's just pull off the shroud. And that's all the screws you need for the shroud, which is nice. And you don't want to lose these, so I'm gonna, and I don't have a little box for them. Actually, I do. I have a bunch of free boxes since I reorganized my bolt modding parts. There we go. So I'll just use this little box to keep everything in track. Because if you lose them, it kind of sucks. But so um, need a reboot. Well, Windows. yeah, just restart it. Thanks. So, right, and the shroud just comes right off after that. So you unscrew those five screws and it comes off. Right, and then you pull your fan cable. And that's all good. Shroud's off. So then you have your heat sink, um, four heat pipes. It's, like, I feel like the fin stack isn't quite, like, as big as it could be, but the cooler does a decent job. And at this point, like, the PCIe slot gets annoying, so that's where the paper boxes come useful. Right, because if you just try to lay it down, then you have the card at an angle and you're putting stress on the PCB when you try to unscrew it, but this way it's fine. Which one is it? Top one? Well, top one. Oh, the new install is always at the top one. 
Okay, just directing Mr. Guest uh, to help me with my windows. Alright, I think Mr. Guest's gonna look in that out. Mr. Guest, no! Mr. Guest, you need to install all the software! Oh, fuck. <laughs> Mr. Guest, you dirty dirty I swear again, more. sorry. <laughs> fork. It's really funny, I just like, I, I went to an international school, right? And the one thing I noticed is did. like, yeah, we both did. That's how I know it. Else we wouldn't know each other. Yeah. No, so we both go to went to an international school. Um, I'm going to be going to uni sometime soon. Uh, basically, yeah, so you just pull off the six screws. Uh, so you pull off your VRM and your core, because those are all integrated into each other, right? Your VRM heatsink is literally just a plate dumping heat into the fin stack of the core heatsink. And now the card comes right apart. And yeah, I redid the thermal paste myself. So you can see that's actually a pretty good thermal paste job. That's not too bad by my standards. Um, and I'll just put this out of the way for now. And let's have a look at the PCB. All right. So here's your V-Core VRM. Five phases. Um, they run 340 amps total. They're only rated for 80 degrees, though. So that's a bit of an issue. This VRM needs to run cold in order to run well. Um, at 25 degrees, it hits uh, 48 amps per MOSFET. At 80, it's 34 amps per MOSFET. Which, yeah, and so, and they're running parallel, so each MOSFET is actually 34 amps, but there's two in parallel for the low side, which gives you the ridiculous current allowance. Um, yeah, and there's a power limiter that doesn't actually let you use anywhere near the full potential of this VRM. So that's annoying to say the least. Um, and then you have your uh, auxiliary, no, this is VRAM. This up here, uh, this one, this VRM up here, this is a uh, VRAM. So, and that's controlled by this little chip over here. Wait, is it focusing? No. There, this little chip. And that's a, I think that's a, yeah, that's a 1587 from uh, on semiconductor. And this is an NCP, yeah, NCP8122. And this one's controlling the V auxiliary which is this VRM down here, and it's also controlling your V-Core down there. All right, so most of the volt modding is on this one, because this one does the power limiting. This one doesn't have a power limiter. Um, this one runs 400 kilohertz static. It doesn't change voltages. It runs 1.6 volts only. You know what, I'll deal with it with it myself. You can go to there. Um, all right. So, yeah, and the data sheets for this, this one has a public data sheet. This data sheet doesn't exist for this one. I can't find it. Um, I, I'm lucky enough to know somebody who actually has access to the data sheet, and so he provided with me with all the information for that. So let's get to the actual volt modding. Um, so first up, we need to figure out what pins we need to volt mod. So I'm just going to go pull up the guys and figure out what we need to do. Because as I said, I don't actually have anything prepared for today's street. Like, I decided this is going to be a full procedure. The other, the other one. What? The other, uh, no, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> did you know? Yes, I know everything better. Where's my blog? There's my blog. So yeah, and basically I decided to do this card live because it's based off the 260X. So that makes my life really easy since I've done a 260X before. So the HDMI cable might have popped off. Yeah, wait, we just pull this one. Yep. There. And then reset it. There. And it's just KSDF. Just KSDF. And then QWER. So, no, no, it's not taking, just do it all over KSDF, QWER. Um, right. So, what was I, yeah, data sheet, damn it. Um, uh, Q60X. Sorry for just having you stare at the card like that. It's a really... There we go. It's a beautiful card to look at. Right, so this is pretty simple. Now I wish I had a screen over there. Hmm, I did not think this through. <laughs> okay, so which pins? Four from the top. Okay, so... You're not actually going to get to see a lot of this. But basically, right, so first of all, the V-Core pin is on the top edge of the 
controller, right? So the so when you're when you're modding anything, there's a dot on the on one of the corners of your IC of the controller IC, and that's what what you use for orientation. That dot is always in the same place. Everything else doesn't matter. You just use the dot, right? And based on where the dot is, you can orientate yourself around wh which pins you're modding. And in this case, I'm modding the pin fourth fourth on the top from the dot. So that means, where's my multimeter? There it is. Um, what else, what other stuff do we have to install? Just install 3 Mark. Um, yeah, this one. No, uh, open the plastic. Plastic. Open the plastic at computer. And yeah. plastic. And pull 3D Mark, no, 3D Mark 3D one. There, that one. Just for pure 3D Mark. No, not the 2001, 3D Mark. Freaking 3D Mark, version one. Yes. Ah, drag that over and install it. Um, so, yeah. Um, even a basic multimeter works for this. And first I'm just going to find out what that pin leads to. Because soldering directly to a pin, it is doable. I know people who can do it. I can't. So I'm just going to trace the pin out to something that actually is solderable by comparison. Because those pins are tiny. Right? And so there's a lot of issues with like trying to trace it. So you just set your... So I just set the multimeter to 200 ohms because I just need to see if there's a short circuit. I'm looking for a short between the pin and whatever I'm looking for. And then once I find the thing I'm looking for on the pin, I measure the resistance to the ground, which in this case would be one, one mega ohm, probably, because that's what this controller is usually on. That's one, two, three, four, fifth pin. No. And it should just be a resistor that I'm looking for. So anything beige is a capacitor. Anything black is usually a resistor. And you can occasionally, oh, and this is awkward. So it looks like that pin goes straight into the PCB. All right? It doesn't actually lead to anything on this side. The actual, which is nice because the cooler is going to fit even with the volt mod, but it's awkward because I need to figure out where to trace it to on the back. Uh, this is this is one of the harder cards to do. So this one's number four, and you really want to check these over and over and over again. There, that's the right pin. And now it's just a search for the... And yeah, and basically I'm just going over everything on the back because you can't tell what you're looking for. And once I hit it, I know... Not that I'm not using a color. No, no. Once you hit it, it tells you... Andrea. Uh-huh. Leave. Uh, 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 dinner. Go. Mr. Guest is going to go have dinner. I'm going to stay. Please, it's, <laughs> it's warm. Oh. And I can't seem to find this pin. It's obnoxious. Oh, I'm not on it. Hopefully. Oh, there we go. Found it. Okay, so I found the pin. It hooks up to a resistor on the back because, well, this pin should hook up to a resistor. Um, it hooks up to the... I don't know if you're going to be able to see this at all. Eh? Get the light there. So, basically, there's three resistors. It hooks up to the middle one. I'm going to have a photo on the blog of what to do with the card. And I'm going to have thermal paste okay. all over me. Should have undid the thermal paste first. Does that anything come off? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. See ya. CS3. Um, so Mr. Have... Guest is leaving. Goodbye, Mr. Bye. Guest. So once you find your pin. Oh, pretty much is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. So once you find your pin, you just check the pin against ground, and we're getting 1.5 mega ohms. So that's exactly as I expected, and that just means and it's higher than the 260x. Because if I'm not mistaken, actually that one was also one or 1.5 mega ohms. So yeah, and this pin, this resistor seems to be a straight up short. So this resistor seems to just be used as a bridge. So on GPUs, there are several kinds of resistors that you might see, and some of them have zero resistance across them, and those are just bridges to connect traces that are going across o over another trace. So yeah. It's that resistor, and it's not zero resistance, it's 1K, so I have to solder to the same side as the pin is. 
Um, and yeah, and it's basically just a case of hooking this. Uh, I can also check the core from that pin, uh, just in case, because basically how these most of these pins work, they take the voltage of the VRM, and they could divide it into a smaller voltage against the ground, and that gives you, and they read the value on that. So ideally, I should be seeing something around one megaohm. Yeah. Okay, well, this is just this usual case of do it the old-fashioned way. So now I'm just going to go and get a 50 kilo ohm potentiometer because I don't really trust a 22k on this card because the 22k uh, works on the 260x. I'm not 100% sure if it'll work on this card. Um, I'll start the soldering station up. Uh, for your tip, I'll keep it cold for now, um, you want a chisel tip. Right, you don't want a like a needle tip because those are just completely useless uh, tips. They don't melt to anything like the actual tip. Every all your solder builds up around the edge. And this was originally a needle tip, but I got sick and tired of it, so I just chopped it off, and now it's a chisel. Bad chisel, but it still works better than it worked before. I'll just let that heat up. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go get my box of potentiometers. Uh, fifty. There we go. Fifties. There we go. So these are my 25 to 50k ohm potentiometers. So this would be a potentiometer, and this one is a 25. This one is a 25. Please give me a 50 already. This is a 50. Great. So this is a potentiometer. Uh, the numbers are written on the edge of them. And basically, it's a resistive element with a slider hooked up to this and you can adjust the resistance between these two and one of these two stay the same. Basically the resistance between this pin here and the other two pins changes depending on how you slide it. Obviously if you slide it that way, this one is now, uh, just let me check that, that one should be shorted right now. And if it is, then good. Hmm, got that wrong. Bloody things. Can't ever remember which way they work. Ah, oh, now it's shorted. It's weird. Right, okay, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, it clicks on this side, clicks on that side. So that explains. So, this way, and I'm gonna have it just, like, hot glue it to the back of the card. I have a hot glue gun right here. I'm gonna get that heating up as well because I'm probably going to finish the soldering really quickly. And now I'm just going to get some wire and get it hooked up to the pin. Um, and then I'm going to check that the wire is actually hooked up to the pin that I need, because if it isn't, then, you know, screwed. But it makes my life a lot easier to check uh, with the wire. So I got an extra table over there. I'm just going to put these away for now. And here's my spool of wire wrapped onto a AMD stock heat sink. I'm just going to keep using black wire because it looks better. Um, it doesn't really make a difference because you can't tell, like, there's no voltage across the wires since they're just, like, data pin, uh, signals. Just cut this up, strip it. I like to take a lot of extra wire because that gives me freedom to, like, hot glue the potentiometer just about anywhere on the card, which is nice for convenience. Um, also, if you want, you can... If you're doing this for a personal system and you don't want to have to open the case or have a potentiometer just sticking out of your card, um, you could try like put a connector or something and run the potentiometer off of that. So yeah, and then with soldering, um, basically to do the best soldering you need to use as much flux as possible. You're never going to screw up if you use a lot of flux, but if you just don't use flux then life is going to be hard. Really hard. So here's my rosin or flux or whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure which one of the two it is. Um, and so, yeah, wait, just twist your wire first, just so that it doesn't separate out when you come at it in the wrong direction. So you just take your wire by the strip part and then you just spin it around and that usually ties it up well enough. And you just get the rosin on it and then you go get your solder. 
Um, the problem with these little wires is they get really, really hot really, really quickly. So when you're doing this, um, your hand's probably going to burn. Like, not injury burn, but like it's going to get hot. So just be prepared for that. The wire get, does get hot very quickly. There we go. And now let's tin it. Come on. Doesn't want it tin. There. And you can just hold it onto there for a bit longer. Yeah, and now it's actually getting hot. I can start feeling it. Yeah. And now the wire's starting to burn. Like, hurt to hold. Oh, great. So I'll get the excess off. And just solder right onto the little resistor. This is awkward as hell, because that resistor is tiny. I have a bad angle for the light. Um, I'm just going to throw a box under there and solder right onto it. And then I'm going to hit it with the hot glue to make sure that it doesn't come off. The problem is there's too little, like there's a cap right next to it, like a capacitor right next to that. So that that's somewhat infuriating. But usually you can just sort of ignore it unless you use a lot of extra solder. I'm going to pick up a little bit extra. There, that's about how much I need. And with these lead freeze, you want to crank the heat up. Like, they melt at like 250, but they don't really... They're supposed to melt at like 250. I've never managed to get them to melt at 250. Like, they take forever. Oh, there we go. Stuck. Oh, no, it's stuck on the cap. <laughs> that's the got to be really careful with this. If you get the wire on the wrong thing, or if you short two things by soldering like this, then you're kind of out of luck. I mean, you can always desolder it, but if you miss that you made a mistake, then the card's pretty much fried instantly um, as soon as you go to boot it up. So I'm just going to visually check that. That looks like a short circuit to me, though. But at least the like solder is starting to melt properly. Yeah, so now I can actually see that it's hooking up um, in the area. You know, the surrounding ones, and just get the one I need. There. And I got two again. Damn it. Come on, come on. Ow, ow, my hand's starting to burn. There we go. There, so just visually check. Um, if you can't see properly, which isn't that surprising, because these things are freaking tiny and obnoxious, you can use just a, like, a loop to, you know, like, magnifying glass to just check it out. Um, and now let's just hit it with the hot glue, because that wire's going to come off really fast. And my hot glue gun had excess on load. Oh, well. And just hit it gently. You don't want to force anything, because if you separate that wire again, now you're going to have alt glue on that wire, and that's going to make your life so much worse when you're trying to solder again. So, that's that. That's hot glued on. Blow on it. The hot glue needs to, like, uh, dry off. Like, you need to wait for it to cool down. I forgot to strip both ends of the wire, so that's going to be a little bit awkward, but that's not too bad. That looks solid to me. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit more from this angle, because I only got it from one side. You really don't want these coming apart. If this comes apart, then that sucks. Alright, uh, worst case, you solder it to the worst resistor, like the wrong resistor, and you're going to be pulling it apart again anyway, but... Hopefully you don't have to. Um, so yeah, and I'll just throw this into a... Which system? I'll just throw it into my AMD uh, motherboard reviewing system, which is basically just a motherboard right now. Um, right, so now I'll check with the... Now you check that you have the wire on the pin you need. So I'm just going to go check the, like, the controller pin out again. One more time to make sure I didn't make anything wrong. Four pins over. Okay, so that's good. So it should be four pins over. So now I'll just strip the wire so that I can read off of the wire to check that the wire is actually hooked up properly. And then I'll tin the wire, hook the wire up to the potentiometer, and then put the card back together. And that's like that's the 
most basic volt mod you can do. It doesn't do any power adjustment, right? So you're still going to have power limits right now with just what I did. I, I didn't remove the power limits. And power limit removal on this controller is super, super easy. So I'll do that right after that. And after that, we'll look at the other controller. And I think I'll have to look up a data sheet for that one, but I know that one has a public data sheet. You can just Google the number, right? You Google the number and the company you suspect it's from. So that one has an I sort of symbol on it. So that might be an intercell, but I'm pretty sure that one's an on semi again. I'm not 90% sure, but usually you can just do the number and the data sheet into Google and that'll usually come up with what you're looking for. Um, you have to get a little bit creative with your terms, but just keep pump punching in like controller, PWM, you know, those, those kinds of terms and eventually they'll come up with what you want. So I'm gonna tin this wire because I'm not gonna screw it up otherwise. Um, so again, use lots and lots of frozen. There, get some more solder. You can reuse solder if you use a lot of blocks, which is nice. You don't have to get fresh solder from your coil. So, yeah, and then just hold it on there. It'll get the wire to the right temp same temperature as your pen, and then, and then, then it'll come out and right with ease. There, that's nice and tinned. So it's all nice and shiny. I don't know if that shows up on camera, but if it's nice and shiny, then you're good. So now let's check the resistance from that pin. Uh, it should be the right pin to the wire. Right, and now you have the wire sticking out, so that's nice. Um, let's just hit that pin. Uh, what's nice here is the traces from this controller actually go pretty far out. So when we're cutting the power limiters, I'm pretty sure they're all on the same side. So I'll just take like a, you're going to need something like a push pin, right? Push pin style object. And you just want to scrape through the traces when you're cutting things out. Um, or if you can trace the trace to a resistor, you can just crush the resistor and that usually works. You have to check where the resistor leads. I tried doing that with the R9290X. Uh, if you go to my blog, the first thing is the R9290X Frankenstein. That's what happened. I crushed a bunch of resistors, found out it didn't work because the controller was really smart on that card. There we go. There, zero. Okay, hit the right pin. Yep, so that's showing 0 0.4, 0 0.9. Ne mojo streamu! Oh, damn it. I really don't get this. I said I'm streaming today, and they made dinner. Ugh. So yeah, now, uh, sorry about that, like, really. Um, so yeah, and now we have to just reassemble the card and check that it works, and get the potentiometer on it. So again, these are actually really easy to tin because they're made to be tinned, so you don't need to do anything. You just go over them. And I want to mount it here, I think. So I'm just going to hit this one because this one's the closer one. There, see? These tin are really simple. You just go right over them and they're tinned. Um, you can also use a trimmer if you don't want to use a pot. Um, I like using pots because they're easier to slide around. But there's a risk that they're going to, like, you can hit a short circuit really easy with these. And if you do that, you're going to get a ton of volts through the card and the card's dead. So a trick to prevent that is you go and get a uh, normal resistor to limit your minimum maximum voltage. And I'm just going to use a 10K and you hook it up in series with one of your pins. Um, so I'm just going to use a 10k ohm because we're using a 50k ohm potentiometer. Basically, that means we can't go below 10k ohms, which I think is like 1.6 volts core, which is way too much, but like it's something better than nothing sort of is protection. Ideally, if you wanted to do this at home and you're just starting, I would recommend using like a 20, well, not a 22k, but look for something like uh, try make a 15k. So you could combine like a 10k and a 4.7k. All right, this is a 4.7k. Useless. I was ordered to bring you dinner. Yeah, well, I can't eat while talking, can I? Oh, fuck you. Mm. What, what did I say about the damn swearing? Uh, seriously, dude, you're ruining everything. Um, I even brought you dinner. Yeah, dinner I'm not going to be eating for ages. Um, yeah, so just shorten these a little. And I'm just going to run a 10k flat, because actually... Yeah, I'm just going to go straight for 10k. 
A little question, sorry for interruption. Yeah? Where, where's the cable from? What cable? I don't know, somewhere in those. Oh. And you haven't even opened the box, you don't know that it doesn't have the cable. Um, all right, and again, just tin it. These also are made to be tinned really easily. And these are even worse for holding than cables because they have even less thermal capacity. So these burn much faster. And I'm just going to hook this up to the ground end because that's just how I like to do it. Like, I'm going to hook it up to the lead that I'm going to be soldering to ground. There we go. So that's tinned. Get the pot out. Ow, 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 damn it. And at this point, I'm going to get a pair of tweezers to hold it for me, because I'm just going to burn. And the tweezers are where? There they are. Sorry for the blocking the camera, I'm just getting some. There. All right, and these are just like, you know, from a hygiene kit. So you can get specialized tweezers, but these work just fine for me. And then it's just solder these two together, and then you're done. Come on. Oh, this Try maybe. I'm gonna put this down like this. This part's really annoying. I'd recommend actually doing this after you have the pulp mounted somewhere. Otherwise, you end up with stuff like this. Oh, well, I'm not one for thinking procedures through too well, so. There, so that's soldered on. Now I'll solder on the wire. There. Damn it. Come on. There. Alright, so that's that. And then we pull this one to ground and that's done. That's a volt mod. Um, you'd also maybe want to put a switch in between them. If you want to have a volt mod that you can turn on and off. Which I'll do later by cutting the wire and just adding the switch in line. And put this out of the way so I don't break it. Alright, and we'll just be hot gluing this back on. Um, I don't know, I don't really want to put it near any of the screw holes. And at this point, you want to bend these pins so that they don't take up too much space. And this card's not going to be space efficient in the slightest. If you have a big heat sink, this is not going to fit under it. Um, let's see, that's fan. Um, that's cables over there. I'm going to put it here. Because there's a screw right there, but there's a lot of empty space. Ish. Yeah, I'm just going to put it here. Do it with some hot glue. One side first, let it dry. I mean, solidify, not dry. It doesn't dry, it just cools down. There. I hit the other side, and you know, just hot glue it to your liking. I like to use a wall because I have a tendency to rip these things off, and that's annoying. Um, just do the whole back. And the front edge is kind of obnoxious to do, so that, that one I don't bother with. Yeah. Hot glue, like, the one downside to using hot glue for this stuff is you get these little, like, spider webby things everywhere. Annoying. To say the least. Um... Now we just do this one. There, pull that off. Um, even more wire. And we're going to just pull this to ground. And I don't actually see a very good grounding point on this card. So I'm just going to pull it to ground on the, uh, on the uh, PCIe. Because that's like, it's ground. It works. Um, Occasionally you would pull it down to the screw holes, but unfortunately every screw hole on this card is in use. So pulling it down to one of those is not really a great idea, because there's screws coming through those. There. So, again, same old. Get your wire twisted round. Flux. Flux the wire. Get your solder. And you don't want to, like, if you're doing this for the first time, you definitely don't want to speed through this. Like, I'm going relatively fast and not checking stuff over and over again, but, like, with the pin, 
you really want to be 100% sure. So you might want to check it like several times and like at several different angles to make sure that you don't have the pin accidentally. Like you can hit the pin next to the other next to the pin you're trying to measure really really easily on some of these controllers. So I'm going kind of fast through this, but if you're doing this yourself, I recommend you check the pin over and over and over again. Um, this is the third card I'm bolt modding, so I'm just sort of like, yeah, and I did a 290X, and that 290X was a pain, because this is one potentiometer, that 290X is one potentiometer, one resistor, and then a whole bunch of resistors because I screwed up the power limiter. And I'm not sure which way PCIe grounds, so let me just check on a cable. Right, these are six pins. So ground is on the top edge. This is bizarre. So this is ground. So ground is uh, it's on the clip side. All right, so it's this one. Because the clip is into the PCB. If the clip was out of the PCB, like pointing downwards instead of up, then it'd be this one, but it's not. It's these. So let's hit those. Uh, you were Red. They asked for a close-up camera so they can see the soldering. Oh, that's gonna be. I can't do it closer up. Like, sorry, but I really can't get it closer. Wait, maybe. No, you don't want to. Damn it, there. Just want to hit ground. Damn it. Can't you zoom? Right. So this is one of those things where it's really awkward. So the ground plane of your graphics card is a giant heatsink, essentially when you're trying to do this. And it's not gonna bond well. So lots and lots of flux, and try to heat it up for a long, long time, because your wire's just gonna pop right off if you screw up. And it's obviously bad. And you don't want to hot glue onto this area, because this is your grounding plane. You're gonna be using it for a lot of more things. Hot glue only when you're doing little resistors and stuff. Here, you just want to use a big soldering wall, like good soldering joint. You don't want to do a crappy joint on here, because this is ground. And ground's important, you can't just glue over it. So now you have your ground. Strip another wire, tin it, and pull it to the resistor on the potentiometer. And get the potentiometer. And then check, before you even hook this up, you always check with your multimeter. Um, so I already set up the multimeter into 200K. And you check with your multimeter before you, uh, not before you solder, but before you put the card in the system. Because if that multimeter, if this is on zero, then power limiter be, like, voltage limiter be damned or screwed. Um, let's go. More works in. Oh, by the way, all the smoke, not harmful. Like, really. It's not going to kill you. Trust me. <laughs> Like, I, as, as far as I can tell, there's nothing on the internet saying that it's dangerous to breathe it in. So I'm just going to go with it's completely safe. Do you need to install anything else apart from 3D Mark? Um, just install as much stuff as you can. Okay, so let's get the card hooked up. And let's just get this. And I'm sorry for putting my hand in the way, but it's not like you would see much. There. Well, that's not the prettiest work I've... Actually, this is getting steadily better. Okay, so now let's do the final checkup. So, just measure from the two pins on the potentiometer that you have the resistance you want. So that means I should be seeing 50k right now, or something close to 50k. And we're getting 52k, so that's good. Because these things have a 10% tolerance. They're the cheapest ones I could find. So now it's just a case of put the card back together and rock and roll. So yeah, and now the white boxes come in handy again because we have this giant monstrosity stick off the back of the card. So we can just throw this on here and put it back together. Heat sink first, which means I need to do redo my thermal paste. I think they made their compliment. They said it's very interesting. Yeah. Say we said it's very interesting, so thanks. thanks. There we go. Core wiped off. 
perfect mirror of a core there. The lighting's really bad, sorry, but it's like if I don't have the little lamp turned on, I'm not going to see anything. And between me not seeing what I'm working on and you not seeing what I'm working on, I'm more worried about me here. So, yeah. Um, and now I'll just rub off the heat sink. And I know a lot of sites would be like, oh, use lint-free cloth. And I'm just like, I don't give a damn. It doesn't make a difference. Like, seriously. How much is, like, a tiny little fiber of lint going to do compared to an air bubble? Nothing. So we're just going to wipe this off like this. And heat sinks good. And yeah, this is why I said this volt, volt, uh, the controller here is great. Because, like, the heat sink actually still fits just fine, even with the mods. Right? Which, on, like, say, a 260X, you can't, because you're doing all your soldering on the same side as the heat sink, heat sink is. Because the though there are some cards where the controller is on the other side of the PCB where everything is even more convenient, and my 290X no longer has a heatsink because it's soldering on the heatsink side and nothing fits now. So if you're doing this, be prepared to like have an AIO to strap on or something because you're gonna have issues with mounting the heatsink. So I have the heatsinks cleaned off. Uh, Keep catching the camera with the chair. Um, I'm just gonna get my thermal paste box. Uh, Yep. Uh, says he was away for 15 minutes. What did he miss? Uh, 15 minutes. From when? I don't know. Um, you probably m missed me strapping on the potentiometer. Look, you don't have to worry about missing anything. There's going to be a... Broadcast. Uh, will be no, the, it, it's, this is going all on the YouTube channel. This stream is going. So I have a YouTube channel. You can get to it through the link down here. There's a... No, well, down, yeah. down, down here. Down here is a link to my blog. And in the top right, yes, the top right of the page, you will find a link to my YouTube channel. And is this expired? I hate thermal paste. It expires too there, fast. There is a small one there. That... Yeah, but that's a crappy one. Uh, uh, my main issue with thermal paste, it all expires on me. Okay, did you, let's did just you use install Cyberbench? Signbench? No, Signbench is just an unzip. Okay. I think. But you don't need to install it, it's a, G, a CPU benchmark. Okay, I guess I... So... Yeah, everything else is installed. Yeah. So now let's just throw the thermal paste. So this is just some EK uh, thermal paste. And it's probably a rebrand of something. I'm not sure what. I ran out of MX2. More, more like, I didn't run out of it, but... If you have one of those big tubes of thermal paste, the thermal paste at the very back of the tube tends to solidify. Just straight up solidify. It becomes concrete. Completely useless. Um, and I have a little thermal paste spreading thing, and I probably buried it somewhere. I did, didn't I? The old piece from my computer. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So with the thermal paste application, though, actually... No, no that's not it. Well, we can just use a lunch use a, card. Yeah, we can just use <laughs> a lunch card. So I know a lot of you will probably now complain that I'm th spreading the thermal paste wrong, but I'll just be honest, I did my own testing on this. It doesn't make a bloody difference. Um, and this way I know for sure that all of the GPU core is covered. All right? And some air bubbles are not going to kill your card. Lack of thermal paste on parts of your card? Yeah, that might. Some point X millimeter you know, air bubbles are a problem. Okay, are no, a problem. I, I'm officially leaving, so... Yeah, yeah see ya. Okay, see you stream. Yeah, you know, I'm still gonna probably go till 12, even though I'm probably gonna run out of content after I'm done with this, because Windows isn't set up. Hello, Mr. Guest. Everybody loves you. I might even be here next week, almost. Yeah, and next week I'm doing liquid nitrogen, so you can refill my container. I, I draw from you. Yeah, you're not getting paid. <laughs> I got I got free dinner tonight. That's good enough for me. There we go. Yeah, that's a nice layer. That actually looks way better than when I was... Nah, it isn't. It's really wasteful. But yeah, this also lowers how much thermal paste you have on there, right? Like, look at how much thermal paste I scraped off. It's a decent chunk from what I d dumped on there. Admittedly, I dumped way too much, but... You know, if you screw up, this method means that you have less thermal paste on there, which is good. Because you want the thermal paste to cover it. You don't want a giant blob. You don't want thermal paste going everywhere. 
And now let's just remount the heatsink. So that's a simple case. Yeah. Uh, Sapphire uses like really thick thermal pads, especially on the VRAM. These are three millimeter. These are two millimeter by the looks of it. Two millimeter is fine, but the three millimeter at that point, I'm kind of like, it doesn't even, it still works better than air, but you know, at that point, I'm kind of, kind of wish they made the heat sink a little more accurately. And for some reason, ah, there we go. Now fits. All right, and we're just gonna test the vCore mod. Because you could, in theory, if you knew exactly what you're doing, um, and I got the heatsink wrong, right? Ah, there we go. Heatsink alignment. Freaking pain most of the time there. Especially with the thermal pads. They just get all the in the way all the time. There we go. All my screws are aligned. Now let's screw it back together. I could just zip tie some fans on at this point, but eh. Yeah, if you want to see more guides like this, I don't know. Complain to Sapphire, complain to Gigabyte, complain to MSI that I don't get enough cards. <laughs> Though, actually, uh, if you want to help the blog, I'm going to be... If this card still works at the end of today, you'll be able to buy it. I hope. And actually, I'll clean it up a lot more after this. Like, right now, I'm just showing you how to do the basics. Um, if you want to buy the card, I'm going to clean it up. Like, it's not going to be this barely usable mess that I tend to run with. Well, it is usable and it works, but I, I don't like it compared to, like, if I clean this card up properly and I just did the screw order wrong, but really, who cares? It's, it's just going to cause the thermal paste to leak out in one or two directions. It's not going to cause a disaster. There. I like Sapphire because they made all their screws, like, these are all the same screw. Which, like, you might be thinking, eh, that's just a minor thing, but really, it makes my life a lot easier since I don't have to search for screws. That's another positive with this card. And they're all spring-loaded. So, which is really unnecessary for most of the shroud. It's nice for the core. Um, also, Sapphire actually uses pretty stiff springs compared to some things. Like, I had a, my Gigabyte Windforce cooler. The springs on there were there for aesthetics. Like, really, those springs did nothing. They were there for aesthetic reasons, and maybe stabilizing the screw when you were trying to get it in, because they sure as hell didn't do anything for mounting pressure. Um, like, really, those springs were like 5 gram or something. They barely held the screw up. Um, whereas Sapphire actually uses proper spring-loaded screws. And they use all the one screw, which is really convenient. Just needed to attack. Just a little blocks. There. Yeah, and that's the heatsink mounted again. All right, not coming off. That's all good. I really hope I have it to ground. Well, actually, this doesn't matter. So here's the nice thing. Even if this isn't hooked up to ground, this is 52 kilo ohms. Nothing's gonna go through. Like, it might be a bit of an issue. Like, you might stop the card from working, but nothing's gonna burn, per se. So you don't really have to worry about hitting the wrong thing when you're soldering down there too much, but, you know, better to check. Um, well, better to be sure, and you have to do less soldering then, and less soldering is better. There. So plug in the fan, put the shroud on, and screw the shroud on, because I'm just going to use two screws, because honestly I don't need this to be perfectly attached. We're going to be doing more modding, and I need access to the card quickly. Quick access to the card is key, so I'm just going to do cross like that, and that'll hold the shroud on. There we go. Now this card is a little bit annoying to measure on, because you don't have... Um, like, the easiest to measure off of are SMD resistors, I mean capacitors. Uh, the through-hole mounted ones, like, you need to hit the legs and you can occasionally short them, and that's bad, to say the least. So, let's move over to the system, and over here, and mount the card. Um, yeah, card's ready to go, fans are plugged in, system's running, still installing Windows. Um, 3D Mark apparently is installed, I might have to activate it. Um, and I'll do all the tweaking after we get this, so shut the system down. I'm going to get this out of the way.
because that's what my multimeter usually sits. There. Oh yeah, and that's a Fury. Really great card. Love it. Absolutely love the card. Like the zero fan mode and all that is really great. The only complaint I have is Sapphire Tricks uh, version 5. Version 5 Tricks, if you use that, is terrible. Like, I have no idea what they did, but that is worst version of Tricks I've ever used. Like, more broken. Like, sure, there was versions of Tricks that straight up crashed. But when you're ver when, when Tricks straight up does, like, the worst UI ever. Like, literally, they managed to design a UI... Now, I'm going to be using Tricks anyway, because I just like Tricks more than Afterburner and stuff. Um, for a number of reasons. This doesn't get that hot. This backplate's nice. Free advertising for Sapphire. Technically, they got that right. See? Because it'd be in your case and your motherboard would be here. So yeah, really nice card. Loving it. Also going to be vault modding it. Not this, maybe this month, I'm not sure. I still need to experiment with the 290, 290X a lot. Um, so let's throw the card in. Um, if you do, you probably notice that not the, the PCIe slots, actually you didn't notice because you can't see it, but the PCIe slots on my motherboard are missing the tabs because I just got sick and tired of swapping cards with those. You know, it's like I can't accidentally rip the... PCIe slot out, which I've almost done sev on several occasions, and basically after that I decided no more, no more paint tabs. Uh, these short length cards are obnoxious because you need to get your cables around the, and the the weird angling of the connectors is also on this card. Just like, I, sure, it m means the, actually it doesn't really help anything as far as I can tell. Like, really, what purpose does that serve? I have no idea. But I think Sapphire thinks it's more aesthetical or something. So they do it. I find it annoying. But whatever. I don't make graphics cards. I mod them. Um, right, so let's start the card up. And here's the thing. I'm just going to hit ground on... So I'm going to... This is going to be hard to show. So I'm just going to hit ground off of a Molex connector, which if you've been on my other stream, been to my other streams, I do that all the time. Here's a bunch of Molex. Um, I'm just going to hit the ground on that. Basically not the best way to do voltage measurement because it gives you about 3, 30 to 60 millivolts extra on your readings. But, you know, it keeps you safe because you won't dare do anything to the card when you're reading way more voltage than you should be. So let's start this up, put it in two volts mode. Um, and by stock, these cards should run about one volt when they start up. And hopefully it won't catch fire. Hopefully I did everything right. And today you won't be watching the death of a card. Is the card gonna start up? Okay. So we're at 0.95 volts. Card's booting. Motherboard isn't complaining, so everything's good. So card is starting up at 0.95 volts, means the volt mod is safe, it's good. We haven't put a ton of extra voltage through the card, which is why I used a 50k ohm. Uh, in the official mod guide, I'll probably put a 22, because a 22 is actually a much um, gentler stepping for the voltages. And yeah, so this is how we volt mod. That's surprisingly simple, isn't it? You just need your data sheets. If you know how to read your data sheets, you're good. And if you understand like basic electronics, that also helps. And Windows seems to be broken. This computer has a weird, weird bug where if I swap graphics card, it refuses to boot Windows once. Then I need to get into the BIOS, change a couple settings, and then it boots up. Does it all the time. Um, so I'm just going to shut it down, start it up. But we know the card's good, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, other than that, let's... I don't know. I will show you the 290X. Even though it's right on my blog, um, I'll show you where it's get heading towards. Um, Alright, so this is the 290X. It's gotten a lot less awful. I need to get the BIOS. I need the BIOS. There. Good. Good. Good model. Gaming overclocking failed. So yeah, this is the 290X. I'm practicing for the Fury. They use the same controller. Um, the VRM is really sensitive voltage-wise, apparently. Um, yeah, this has a 
10% uh, uh, raised current limit. So that's why the giant heat sink on the VRM. And I, I make these myself. They're just a bunch of aluminum angles and some thermal paste and hot glue. And they actually work surprisingly well. And this one is the biggest one I've built so far. I had a much smaller one. That one kept the card uh, happy. Sorry for hitting the camera there. Um, yeah, and this is there just because I needed the card to start up. Uh, I'll probably swap this out with a Sadon 120V from Cooler Master. Because those coolers are surprisingly good. Not as good as the, the Tri-X on the Fury. Like, this cooler is insane. At 52% fan speed, 52 degrees core. Even with a 10% overclock. Like, this cooler blows my mind. But I shouldn't be surprised considering the cooler is most of the card. Which is usually the case, but like, this is... This is all your card. <laughs> most of the card is extended by cooler, so... You know, that's an excellent card. I love it. Love it. It doesn't overclock that well, but once I get the voltage mods on there, it'll be great. Um, especially thanks to the cooler. And the 290X just needs a water cooler now. Um, I might even throw it on to the chiller, so that could be cool. Once I get my Plasti Dip shipment, which should be sometime next week, in time for liquid nitrogen. So I don't know. Either we'll be doing liquid nitrogen, or maybe the 290X. Actually, nitrogen. Nitrogen is, like, the one I need to use. Um, so, right, you want to see the multimeter, don't you? I'm going to lift you... Again, sorry for the awful camera work, but I don't have a full-time cameraman, and so introducing Mr. Um, Mr. Guest as a cameraman... Ooh, that actually works surprisingly well, so now you actually see it. Um, now, obviously, if you want to have a proper measuring system, I recommend crocodile clips hooked up to the output capacitors, or if you're like really good at your soldering, you can solder directly to the back of the core, and then you even get the voltage drop across the conduction plane from the uh, VRM to the core, uh, which gives you the most accurate voltage readout you can get. And that's what, like, um, if you know uh, overclocking.guide, that's what Darebauer recommends that you do. Um, Let's see, I just need to switch it to generation 2 for PCIe. Alright, so I can't see that. Bloody camera sucks. 3,000 crown camera, what do you expect? Yeah, so that's on generation 2. Uh, and it's just a bug the motherboard has. I really don't know why. It didn't used to do this, but stuff happens. Stuff breaks. So I don't know. Should I put you further out for this part? I don't know, wait, I can't get everything. I can get everything in the shop. There we go, even me. Um, great, so, well, this hopefully starts. I can just turn the multimeter off for now. Um, this will start. Oh yeah, also loving my new trackpad. <laughs> I mean, uh, not trackpad, uh, mouse pad. Or whatever this thing is called, mouse map, yes. Now we'll just start Windows normally. And it's still broken. Don't you love my streams? No matter how hard I try, everything breaks every time. Fresh installed Windows breaks. I mean, if you're wondering what that is, I got wrecked by a fence. Tried to jump over it, miscalculated how much I need to lift my legs, and smashed into it. It, it wasn't that funny, it was just pathetic. Uh, oh yeah, I shredded my finger on the fan running that system, but it, it's, that actually doesn't show up any longer, so... Self-harm day <laughs> today. Okay, let's get back into the BIOS. This freaking motherboard is going to kill me one day. Or the 3960X. One of the two is giving up. I'm not sure which. So... It's either, usually what this shows me is that it usually, when it doesn't want to boot, it's, well, actually not usually, 90% of the time it's basically the memory controller complaining about something. So that either means more voltage on memory controller or less voltage. I don't know why it needs less, but it starts with less. So, yeah, hopefully now we'll start. Start normally. 
Huh, see? Stupid computer. Uh, I swear this thing is possessed. <laughs> also, the Nitro card from Sapphire also has the zero RPM fan feature. So that's really nice. Oh, I shredded also my finger. But I don't know what I shredded this on. Oh, yeah, and this is the usual, you know, Windows needs to install GPU drivers. So we're just going to let this start up. So. Uh. It didn't break. Surprising. So this is just going to start up. It's going to install its uh, drivers for this card, which I don't get why, but it does that. And we're going to restart, and it's going to run fine. And then we're going to run 3D Mark. 3D Mark, um, the new one. So Fire Strike, Fire Strike Extreme. But before we do that, we need to optimize the operating system. Because otherwise I could have just run this on my main operating system and it would have worked just fine. Uh, thirsty. Cooler Master Cup product placement. I think I explained why I have to thank Cooler Master for these streams, didn't I? The power supply is from them. The, the one currently powering the system, that, that was a gift from Cooler Master. Ooh. Man, I had milk in that cup before. It sucks. Alright, so now Windows is going to install drivers. Yeah, so basically you just have to sit and wait for this stupid stuff to install. Alright. And it's just PCIe device, unidentified device video controller, blah de blah de blah. It's graphics card stuff. Um, that installs operating system works after that. So actually, while that's installing, we can start turning stuff off. Um, that means you just open up your task manager, and we're running on less than what before, now that we actually have drivers because of the generics, and show pro processes from all users, right? And this is all the setup stuff. Hmm, this actually isn't full of crap I need to delete. Though, the easiest way is just to go personalize. And then if you go Windows Classic, I can usually drop a little. Nope. Oh well. Windows Basic and Windows Classic are what you want to use, because iRO actually eats into your graphics performance. Um, at least one driver's finished, another driver's finished, everything finished. Nobody cares. Close. Um, I'm not going to install AI Suite yet, so let's restart this. And after this, the monitor is going to work properly. And you won't be able to see anything again. Oh, and we'll need tricks. So the nice thing about fresh installs in Windows is they boot fast. Like, really fast. And in my experience, they boot faster on AMDs for some reason. I don't know why. But it's like, I have an AMD system and it boots faster on a fresh install of Windows. Always. Never, ever is it slower. Don't know why. Ah, uh, wrong password. You can probably guess the password by now. There we go. So as you can clearly see, Windows now works. And we have Iro enabled, so that's bad. Yeah, and we're using a lot of RAM. First up, Windows Basic. Why on earth is it using so much RAM? No processes from all users. <laughs> right, so this, um, so you can't see that because it's not in focus. Um, 
Let's see. I'm going to try manually focus it since we're going to be spending a lot of time looking at windows right now. So, let me try focus the cam. Um, where's the focus control? Huh? Oh, great. Autofocus is clueless. Sorry. Oh, that looks in focus to me. I'm going to try zoom you in. I'm not sure if that'll work very well. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of zoom. Sorry. Well, basically, right now, there's a spooler service. And that's purely for printers. You don't need it. Right? And there's a service for that. So you need to turn it off in your services. Instead, status. And you just want to turn off the things that are running. Now, I'm not going to disable my internet support on this one, because just... Like, you can. You can disable all kinds of stuff on here. Um, but for now, I'm just going to take out... Um, where's Spooler? You know what? I'm going to set this all up on my own time sometime later. Right, let's get into 3D Mark. And that means I need my codes. So you can't look at that screen. Sorry, you can look at the system. Um, upgrade. Uh, computer upgrade. No. No, no Internet Explorer. Close all tabs. Nobody cares about you. Um, there we go. I'm just going to copy my code in and you're going to be looking back at the screen. Um, paste, register, done. Badoom. There we go. So now we have the full version of 3D Mark installed. It was on a Steam sale, so that's why I caught it. Um, there we go. Yeah, you can buy 3D Mark through Steam. So that's nice. Um, all right, and now we're just going to run Fire Strike, and I need to throw tricks on here. So that means I need to find, and tricks should be in here somewhere. There we go. That's the new tricks. And let's just install it. Yes. Next, install, close. So tricks is really easy to install. That's nice. And now I'll just type in shift. Breaks. It should have been installed already. No, oh, this is bloody great. Oh, well, it's somewhere in pro. It's just installed in program, so I'm just gonna go find it. Uh, Sapphire tricks. There. And just throw that into the taskbar and open it up. Show details. Yes, just run it. I need to set up this whole computer properly after this. There we go. As you can clearly see, Trix has gotten a lot worse. It's a much bigger UI. It's a much uglier UI. Well, it looks visually pleasing, I guess. If you're into Sapphire's theme for it. But much more importantly, it's bloody useless for the most part. So we're just going to run fixed fan profile. And this card goes, I think, at 26 or 25%. It shuts off the fans. At 20, it's definitely turned off. I'm just going to run it at, say, 72 for now. Because that's where the like the cooler has diminishing returns with higher and higher RPM. Um, and the GPU clock. And the sliders actually lag behind. You can't enter your values in by typing, which is really, really infuriating, in my opinion. That's the biggest mistake they made with a new version of tricks. Um, also, yeah, the sliders lag behind your actual settings, so I don't have GPU-Z installed right now. So I'll throw GPU-Z on here. Should have it here. That's GPU-Pi. Oh, great, I forgot to bring GPU-Z. I have CPU-Z? Nope. Okay, great. We need to use Internet Explorer. <laughs> yeah. 
I just need to download GPUZ and stuff, so... No, what the hell is this? Right, and as you can see, it just resets on its own, so... I'll set it to clocks I know work. Apply. And I don't have GPUZ right now. Um, I'll just run 3D Mark to show you how the volt modding is set up. So I'll just run Fire Strike, and I'll need to re-enable autofocus. There we go. And it's blurry as out. This camera really has no idea. Yeah, the, oh, there we go, focus now. Goody. Um, zoom you out again. And save. There. So let's out, focus. Okay. Ta da. There we go. Sorry for the glare on the screens. So now we're going to re enable the multimeter. Just You need to focus on that, and this screen's going to be running Fire Strike, so doesn't really matter that it's glaring and like how you've probably seen fire strike before so i'm just starting up fire strike and now we're going to go check that the volt mod works so at stock the card runs 1.2 volts All right so fire strike just started and i'm going to measure and i'm on the wrong leg aren't i there it's the correct leg so fire strike is still loading loading and it should jump to 1.2 as soon as it starts. All right, and I'm just holding the... Ta, see? 1.223. So now let's try adjust it. As you can see, the voltage is going up. So I'm cranking it up. We're probably going to hit a power limit soon. There. 1.24 ish and this voltage controller on the on the uh, 380 is really obnoxiously smart right it's like one of the smarter controllers the only one that I can complain about more is the 290x controller which is like you cut off the power limiter and it realizes that well you cut off the power sensing and it realizes that oh you've cut off the power sensing and the card must be broken this one isn't that smart, but it's pretty smart about its voltage control, which is annoying to say the least. Yeah. As you can clearly see, now we're getting 1.25 volts. Ish. Not exactly. Also, there's voltage boost because I'm running off of the um, pin down there, off of the Molex. So if I actually measure across the card, say the same capacitor, Right, with two prongs, you can clearly see, yeah, that's a ton of voltage boost right there. So we're not even going above 1.2 right now. Obnoxious, isn't it? So yeah, my favorite way of doing a, of adding the ability to measure voltage off of the card would be just to take, uh, what I'm going to do right now, is there, there are several things you can do. These are good, because you can just, drop the, you know, you can just screw the, these screw terminals. Good old screw ter terminals. These are good because you can just literally, you just wire them up to the things you want to measure from and just drop these in, right? If you pull the screw out on one side. Pull the screw out on one side and you drop this in and you're good. It just sticks in there. Obviously, right, even now, even with the screw extended, it'll stick in there, which is great. Because then you don't have to actually keep holding your bloody leads to the multimeter. If you unscrew the terminal, then you can just drop it in, and it's done. And you don't have to worry about anything after that. You just hot glued it to the card, and you're good. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to add voltage checkpoints. So we're going to have one for ground, one for core, and one for memory. Um, core, I'm going to pull off the core. Memory, I'm going to pull off the memory VRM. And, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And we're just going to run them into these. So one of them is going to be ground, and ground is going to be universal. Though that's still not optimal. You really want to measure ground directly off of one. And, yeah, and this, here's why you run a clean install of an operating system is, right? So that's 8K 
and we're running just slightly overclocked, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, running a slight overclock, we're getting 8K, we're getting 9K graphics score, and 3K overall. Um, if I had a CPU with, actually you can't see it, the brightness on this monitor, sorry, I must have, yeah. There we go, now you can see it, sort of. I sort of get the, nope, that actually makes it worse. Stupid camera. So, wait. I really wish I could do this. There we go. Now you can sort of see it. Sorry for the bloody um, visuals. Yeah, so we're getting 8K right now. Um, it's not fully volt modded. The card is probably going to be hitting power limits very, very soon. So the card works. The volt mods work um, somewhat. They don't work perfectly. So let's get the voltage measuring stuff onto the card, which usually you would want to do first, but it's not that interesting. So let's just shut the system down. And you're going to go back here to stare at me doing volt mods. There. Um, unfortunately, the soldering is like I'd need a like arm-mounted cam or something. I was thinking of maybe getting a camera that I could mount to my head, right? So that it would be looking exactly at the same thing I'm looking at. That could work, I think. But I'm not 100% sure about that. And I don't have a way to like build that right now. So again, um, I'm not going to need the multimeter right now, I don't think, because I'm not going to be doing anything too complicated. We're just going to be pulling from capacitors uh, data. cold. That system is loud. Um, right. And what? I have this cube. Where did the other cube go? There it is. Under the multimeter. Okay, so let's get the card back to pieces. So the core mod works. Or at least it seems to work. Not completely 100% certain that it works, but you know, hot glue is easy to pull off, so we'll be swapping that out pretty soon to a lower uh, resistor. And did I pull off the. Oh, I just pulled off the RM. Not the best idea I've had. Keep those in the box. Sorry about the glare, but really need that light. I guess that might be slightly better. Yeah, that's slightly better. Um, There we go. That's your card. Pull the shroud off. Pull my fan. And now we're going to finish the card off because I went through the basic stuff. So now it's going to be um, power mod. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this only has one power pin, which is nice because um, that means we just trace that pin out, cut it, done. Uh, it also only has, and the memory controller is super simple. And right, doing the screw order wrong again. I want to go in a cross fashion for the screws so that you don't put too much pressure on one side of the card, of the core at one time, but you know, doesn't matter all that much. Uh, Like the first several millimeters of your core are actually like the 0.5 millimeter of your core is like completely useless. There's nothing there. You don't have to worry about scratches on the surface of your core. All the circuitry is on the other side. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's the heat sink. And this heat sink, uh, I give them one thing. These thermal pads stick really well. Also, I forgot one last screw. So let's get that one out. Let's pop it apart. There we go. Huh. See? Thermal paste was pretty good job with the thermal paste. 
Yep, that's nice. So let's get rid of the heat sink. I'm not gonna redo the thermal paste after this. Well, no, I will because we're benchmarking. So, um, all right, so back to the volt modding guide for the 260X, figure out which pin it was. One last pin. Right, so limit for V-Core are the two pins right next to the V-Core pin. That makes life super simple. Get your multimeters, set, volta set it back to, you know, 200 ohms and go about figuring out where the short circuit from pin that you want is to pin that you to something that you can cut. Though we could just cut the pins. That's not that hard. I have a... Right, there's the little push pin, so let's just figure out. And I got thermal paste all over me. Getting through that. No. Oh. This toilet paper really sucks. Like, it's really bad. This is the cheapest stuff we could find. It's like one cent toilet paper. No, literally one cent for this toilet paper. And it just sucks. So much. It needs lint everywhere, but you know, it's not conductive, so it doesn't matter. Hmm. I could just cut the pins. So, this is not really any soldering involved, this is just cutting pins. But, it's easier if I just cut the pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go under the pin with the this thing, right, with this needle, and I'm going to lever it out. And you do that a couple times, and eventually the pin will be cut. And I need to cut the one next to four, five, so it's five, that's the one I was measuring, this one. Um, that's actually going to be a harder... Hmm. Okay, well I need to figure out how to mark them so that I don't have a hard time refinding them over and over again. So I'm just going to rotate the card around. So I have a better view. That's one, two... Three, four, five, the one that's modded. This one I don't want to damage, and this one is the one I need. Cut there. And you're not going to really be able to see this, because even I have a hard time seeing this, so not much I can do to help you with that. Sorry. Um, but basically, there's a pin, right? And I'm using this to just gouge it out. And just that pin. If you gouge out any extra, then it's a problem. Now, obviously, you could just cut the trace somewhere further down from the pin. But uh, the trace is not always visible, especially not on a matte black PCB like this. PCBs are the biggest pain. <laughs> they also cost more to produce than normal PCBs, so it's not like they come for free. The best PCBs for modding are like red and green, but green looks awful and red is kind of flashy. But I don't think I would mind red. 
red would work. There we go. And I think the pin should be just about disabled. And you just keep digging at the pin until it just looks like it's not there any longer. You might want to get like a toothbrush or something to brush away all the little bits of the pin that you'll end up with while you're doing this. Oh, my dinner's gonna suck. But I really can't see any more metal down there, so I'm thinking the pin is gone. Yeah, I'm starting to scratch copper. Actually, I could just cut the trays. Problem with cutting traces is like you can hit the other ones, so I'm gonna go get a knife for this. Um what I'm using is just a Swiss army knife, not optimal. You'd maybe want like an X-Acto blade or something, you know, really sharp and pointy, but this'll work just fine for me. So there, now they're laid bare. I'm just gonna go with the, uh, I think I'm just gonna keep digging at it with the pin. Now, if you trace these out, then usually you can find a resistor on them which you just have to destroy, but, yeah, if this was an NVIDIA, this would be much easier, but on NVIDIA's volt modding doesn't make any sense, since they don't freaking scale with voltage. So uh, on an NVIDIA, you would just look for two shot resistors in this area, short them, and you're done. But here, no. You have to dig through little pins and stuff, so... And it's really hard to see what you what you need to do, so Yeah, this bloody pin is a pain. There's one right next to, over to it, so and I need to do that one too, so that actually I think I got this one faster. Ha! Ah. Okay there, I got this one properly. Well, not properly. There's no real proper way to do this, because you're just trying to destroy them. Very specifically, so... Yeah. It's probably the diff most difficult part of, like, wanting one of these, getting the right pins destroyed, but... Once you get them, you're, you're good. After this, there's no power limit for the cards, so that's nice. Damn car doesn't wanna seriously doesn't wanna give up. I wonder if there was an easier way to do this. You could probably, if you wanted to, trace it out. But the problem is if this pin leads to more than one resistor, then you're just gonna be chasing resistors everywhere on the PCB, and that's just more work than it's worth in my opinion. So it's easier if you just destroy the pin where it starts. Yeah, and just dig it out. There we go. There, and hopefully the card now doesn't have a power limit. I don't think it'll have a power limit, though it might still have those pins connected. I really hope it doesn't. We'll need GPU-Z to figure that out, because GPU-Z has that power limit reading. Actually, it doesn't have for these cards. And it's going to be interesting. You know what, I'm just going to trace it out. Because I don't want to risk having to take the card again. Take the card apart again, so let's see. Nope. Who? Did I find you? Oh, that was quick. 
That is way too quick. And it's not shorted to anything else by the looks of it. Oh yeah, this is good. Okay, so there's one simple resistor right above the controller, and that hooks up to one of the pins you need to go on. I don't think I actually wrecked those pins properly. Um, but this one away. It's, eh, it's really hard to point this out. Get the light up. There we go. So there's the light. Get the shadow out of the way. Uh, um, card like it's this one right here. This resistor. The one the pin is touching. I don't know if I can get it close enough for you to actually see. I'm probably gonna have to do my own photos of everything. Yeah. Okay. It focused. Kinda. There. So that's what you. That's what I'm just gonna basically break off, and after that, no power limits. Um, and there's two of these in a pair that you need to cut off, so... Yeah, and for this part, I like to use a Swiss Army knife on the scissor, like, I use a Swiss Army knife, but I use, like, the scissor... I have a bigger one. Right? This one integrates some scissors, and these are great for this kind of thing, because they're actually really small. So what you can do with these is you can just get the resistor, just grab it, and just crush it. Whoops! Caught it. This card's good. Bloody camera stand. I really wish they made like a single leg tripod that didn't fall over. But, oh well. I'll make my life a lot easier. Alright, get you on the... And just cut it up. Bam. You heard the crack? That basically means it's gone. It's KO. Now that's gone. That's out of order. Now let's hunt down the other one. This card is a lot like the three, like 216X, a lot like it. I really hope I'm hitting the right pins right now. Oh, hooked up to this capacitor, doesn't matter. Uh, and it's hooked up to this resistor by the looks of it. And is it hooked up to this one? Okay, it's hooked up to both of these. By the looks of it. Yeah, let's hook it up to both of those, so we just crush those and hopefully the card will still work. I wish I figured out where my tooth... Oh, right, I needed to clean that toothbrush. No, oh, well. Minor sacrifices. Yeah, that one's gone. In worst case, I need to figure out what to put back in place of them. If you just replace the resistors, usually you can you can just lo lift the power limit by a certain percentage. But I don't like power limits. Period. So no power limit for you, card. There. Blow it out to make sure there's none of the leftovers from the, like, crushing and stuff. Some of those leftovers can be conductive, and if they're conductive, then they're going to screw up your card if they're touching the wrong things. Alright, so that's good. So now we don't have a power limit, and that's the important one here. Um, you could also mod the auxiliary voltage, but I don't need the auxiliary, I just need the memory voltage. So I'm just going to go quickly look up the data sheet. Um, just a case of Googling it. And probably the same controller as... Yes, it is. It is the exact same. So here's the cool thing. The guide for my 260X works perfectly for the 380. I'm going to adapt it a little bit, right? But if you watch this video, then you know everything you need to do. Um, basically, like, you, you get the explanation. If you combine it with the guide for the 260X, you'll be fine. I'll make a I'll make a blog post for this card specifically. But basically I need right, so there's one giant pin on this giant freaking right, that's an 8-7. I think it's the same one. I'll just have to check, because this looks like a 9-7 in the photo. 
That could be an eight or a nine, so I'm just going to type up a one, five, eight, seven. Ah, yep. Yeah, so it's uh, not from Intercell, it's just type in controller. So most of the time it's better if you just type in controller, because you, if you can't tell the brand. And it's an NCP1587, so that's another on semiconductor controller. And that makes life super easy. I'm just going to go and put these on the back of the card right after we get this thing under control. And it's the same damn controller as before, isn't it? Feedback, top view. So orientate according to the. Oops. This data sheet is a bit of a mess. So it's the uh, third across. Okay, so I need to find the dot on this. Does this seriously not have a dot? You're gonna be joking. Well, this thing doesn't have a dot. That's nice. So ideally, I can trace something. Um, and a simple trick is to just measure against the V-core, because if the pin measures... So if I'm not mistaken, the pin I'm looking for measures... I need ground. Nope. Nope. Too little. Just about right. To okay, but those pins aren't it. It's an inner pin. Okay, it's one of these. This one. That's five. And this doesn't measure to ground, so this five. And it doesn't measure to. See, if I could get the leg of the inductor for the uh, memory voltage, that would be great. But I guess I can just pull the source of... This one's on 16. So here's a fun way to like... So I'm just going to explain what I'm talking about with the source and 16 and all that stuff. And if you look here... This is a 7, 16 volt capacitor, right? Under it, we have a MOSFET, which has a drain into the 16 volt plane by the looks of it, which is wrong. <laughs> okay, this VRM is annoying. There's a drain into, but these drain into the MOSFET. I mean, into the these MOSFETs right here. They have their drains uh, dumping into the inductor, both of them, and they're both hooked up in parallel. So, if you measure on the back legs of these, then you get your, you can measure from the source. These should be the ones that run flywheel mode. So these are like low side MOSFETs, and this should be high side. Because this doesn't make sense if it's low side. This one can't be low side. It could be high side, not low side, that's for sure. Um, so if these two are low side, then you can just measure off of the sources on them, and those actually hook back to V-Core. You can also check by measuring the resistance from them to ground, because that should be in the ohm range. Whereas on the... Because they source their voltage from the same freaking line as... Wait, there's going to be a capacitor somewhere here, which should be just straight up one... Oh, wait, no, this is RAM. So that's going to be slightly higher. And ground. I wasn't measuring ground. Well, that's great. There. So that's ground. Right, and this side of this capacitor is memory. There. So the VRAM has 200 ohms of resistance, which you can't see. But basically what I'm doing is I found a capacitor on the... Um, there. there we go. You can see it. Sort of. So I found a capacitor on the VRAM output side of the VRM. 
and you just put it to ground, it's 200 ohms, and that tells you the resistance. So if you're modding and your resistance on something drops suddenly, you know you've done something wrong. And we also know that if we measure from here to this pin, now this pin, and we should be in 20k mode, this pin we see 5, and this pin we see 0, so this pin must be, because it also measures 5k to ground. Yeah. So this is our feedback pin. And now there's a very simple calculation. So at 5k we're getting 1.6 volts, right? It's 5.3k ohms in both directions. And so we need a different ratio between the two resistances so that the pin thinks there's a lower voltage on the core on the VRAM than there should be. And the calculation is um, 1 divided by your, so you take 1, right? I don't know if you can see this. Oh, you can. So 1 divided by, um, there's a formula for why this works, but I, I'm not going to, I can't remember it right now. So, and then you input your first resistor. In this case, we have 5.3K, so we can just put 5.3, because we're just keeping it in the same range. And then we add to that the other one, which is one slash, and we want it, say, if we put it 1.1, then the resistance of the whole thing will be 0 0.85 ohms. That's bad, that's way too low. We need, say, um, and if we put five, then we have 2.5 ohms. And if 5K ohms give us um, 1.6 volts, then 2.5K ohms is gonna give us twice that. We don't want 3.2 volts on VRAM. Uh, we need, we want to say 1.65 starting, 1.75 higher. So that means we should put in something. So what you want is you want the, you're, you're just gonna encapsulate it again right, in your brackets. I'm gonna put this equation up on the blog. All right, you just encapsulate it again in your brackets, and then you put your voltage before that, well, no, you, got, you got, put 5.3 before that, divided by, and you multiply the voltage by this. So 1.6, and it tells you what voltage you're, you're getting now, depending on how you change this resistor, right, there. See, that five, that five is the resistor you're gonna be changing. That's your potentiometer value. So right now, let's say I'm using a 5K ohm resistor, uh, I mean 5K ohm potentiometer, we'd be getting 3.296 volts. Way too freaking much. If we put a 55K, we're getting 1.75 volts. Um, if we put a 220K, we'll get 1.638. And that's a good starting voltage. So let's go get a 250K ohm resistor, which I have. I mean potentiometer, not resistor, and hook up a 30-ish uh, K resistor in series with it. That way we have a safe control. And with this controller, we can solder straight to the pin because the pin is bigger than the resistors. Isn't that nice? So heat this thing up, uh, close up my potentiometer box for too little, and let's go get something more substantial. 10K, 100 to 250K ohm potentiometers. I have a bunch of these, because you know, I know I'm gonna use a bunch of these. And this is 100, this is a 250K. So we're just gonna check that one. Throw this away, and we need a, oh, and we still have resistors. This is a 47K. Um, and I said we need like 33 or 20-ish K, right? Because we want to go up to say 1.8 volts. We don't want to go above 1.7. Like I'm not gonna go above 1.75, but you know, it's better to have headroom than have too little space. Um, 4K7, I really need to figure out a way to organize these damn things. It's way too many of them. Ah, 39K, perfect. Well, not perfect, but it's in the range that I need. So we have another potentiometer. I should probably label them at this point. Can't figure out how. Colored labels might be smart. Um, right, and actually, something really cool I wanted to show as well. Oh, oops, there's still a pad on there. Hmm, let me just move that off and I'll put this in the sink. 
My dinner is going to really, really suck after this. <laughs> uh, you all owe me a dinner. And a graphics card. Nah, the graphics card, like... Um, right, yeah, so while we're going to be selling this thing... Great. Um, so VRAM, I'm going to put that one next to it. Just, like, right here, right? And I need to also make sure that I actually know which one's which. Um, the simplest way to make your vault mods on-offable is to put the switch between the ground and the potentiometers. Right? So if you want to switch on-off vault mods, that's the best way to do it. And I'm just going to cut this pin here because I'm not going to be using it. It's a mess. It adds an extra point of, like, you know, shorting. Bend these back. And now let's just cut it off. With some pliers. Sorry. Well, it's not cut off completely, but it's shortened, so at least that much. And I could probably twist it off if I wanted to. Yeah, it comes right off. I'll just finish twisting it off. And it looks like I won't be doing a, lot, a whole lot of benchmarking today, because this vault modding is actually pretty time consuming. Of course, if I wasn't explaining it all to you, then it might take me less time, but there's no point not sharing the art of this. There. And yeah, I'll be throwing, maybe I'll even throw a little Java app on the blog, which will do the calculation for you. You just punch in your ground to core, uh, you, punch, you just punch uh, ground to, yeah, like, I'll figure something out. But this one, this one's special, this controller. The 1.5 mega ohms and how I just soldered a 50k, that's just how that one works. Um, if I had a full data sheet, I could explain it to you why, but I don't. I'm just going off what I read on the hardware bot forums for that one. So again, I'm going to solder in the same way I soldered before. Just like to keep it consistent. It looks better in the end, in my opinion at least, so... And my opinion is the one that matters as long as I have the card. This actually looks really good. Like, the other card looks freaking terrible because it's like blue and plasti dip and awful, awful card looking. But this one's going to look nice. This is all black. Also, you might want to saw these off to be shorter because obviously this won't fit in a bloody case. Um, let's see. What was it that I needed? All right, so 250k, 250, okay, good. All right, and if you keep your wiring consistent, then you also make sure that you're consistent with your, like, when you're controlling the card, you won't make mistakes with turning them in the wrong direction. You know, they would be like putting hot, it's like when you go into somebody else's bathroom and they're freaking a uh, hot water tap and their cold water tap are screwed up and, and you turn in one direction and you burn yourself. That, that's the kind of thing you'd be ending up with if you did them in different uh, directions. I'm really happy with the Freaking 7870K, it's like a champ for this stream. Well, admittedly, I was using a laptop before, but, you know. Let's go get some solder on here. You don't want to be soldering above your GPU, because that just sucks. Because you can drip this, and I had, I, I just solder onto PCIe pins. That sucked. Like, ow, fucking hell. Ow, that burns. That's why you want to use something to hold the damn thing for you. Nah, you didn't lose it. All good. Ow. This hit my bloody head on the table. Ow, that burnt a lot. It's not a good day for my middle finger. First I cut it up with a fan and then I burn it with a bloody soldering pen. Really not a good day for it. Actually, whole, overall, it's just a terrible day, been a terrible day in terms of injuries for me. Smashed myself into a fence. Uh, burnt, cut up my middle finger. Scuffed my, you know, everything. And smashed my knee, so my knee's been, like, aching all day. Really sucks. Um, there we go, let's finish this damn thing off before it burns me again. You know, and like, oh, it's still not safe to touch. This thing gets so freaking, yeah, and I just had solder drop off. 
This is why I said don't solder above your graphics card, and then I went and did it. Do as I say, not as I, as I do. Read the guides. <laughs> Read the guides I make. Don't do what I do on video, because what I do on video is generally just freaking wrong. Um, I can't touch this now. That sucks. There. So now that I've decided where I'm going to hold glue these things, <sighs> my hands are getting worse and worse. I'm not usually this clumsy. Well, okay, that's a lie. I am usually this freaking terrible at holding things. It's the main reason why I didn't go into chemistry for high school. I was worried about breaking everything in the chem lab. Also why I almost didn't pass my bloody driving license, which... Well, my practical. I miss. I failed the theory by one freaking point. There we go. That's glued on nice. And now I'll hook them from the front as well, because usually by the time I solder on this, I mean glue on the second one. This spider webby. You see this? I don't know if it's showing up on screen pro screen properly, but like when you work with hot glue, the stuff just stretches and it makes these strings that are just like, get on everything and they stick. Well, they're like spider webs. Literally, that's the best way I can, like, what, what I can call them. They're like shitty spider webs. It can't hold anywhere near as much weight as a... Actually, I don't know if somebody's not tested that. It might. Never tested it. Should test that one day. <laughs> How strong are hot glue strings? Um, let's see. So now I'm going to get the front end as well, since usually if I don't get the front end, then the second one makes everything fall apart. There we go. There. And hot glue strings again. Ah. You know, there's some trick to... There we go. Ah. Managed to get them. Get it off without any of them. Great. Um. Right, so we figured out which pin it was last time. Um. Solder the limiter. That means first tin everything again. Uh, probably gonna fix those wires down with some more hot glue later. All right. No, not probably. Definitely gonna do that. Um. All right, so let's get this started because now this is gonna be pretty easy going. Where I just solder this to that to the, you know. After a certain a certain point, the old modding just gets super. Simple. You know, the best thing would be to have a bunch of extra hands for most of these. And have hands that don't feel pain, or hands that are just fireproof. <laughs> one of the two. I can't make up my mind up on that one. Uh, come on. Get it. Ah, oh, there we go. There! That's actually a pretty good joint, compared to all the other ones. Actually, if I do the other one again right now, I could get it to look decent. Oops. Popped it off. There. That one's much more secure now. Well, let's just go with more black wire for the rest of it. I mean, the black wire, like, they do it with PSUs as well, right? You notice that a lot of the more premium PSUs, they'll go with full black wires. And it looks really good. It's kind of obnoxious when you're trying to figure out what's the ground and what's the, what's the plus 12 volts on your PCIe. And you don't want to use Wikipedia. Well, let's get more black wire. It just looks nice. And it doesn't really matter here because there's no hot or cold or whatever. There's no hot or ground. Well, I mean, there is a ground, but it's not like the ground is doing anything. There's a giant resistor between any everything, so... Um, that is way too much. There. Strip the wire, twirl the wire, tin the wire. There, that sort of rhymes. Should be easy to remember. Strip, tr twirl, uh, tin. There. If you just do those, all your wire troubles will be fine. Always. Especially for these. This is AWG28. This is really thin wire. The only stuff I've soldered, worked with that's thinner is like 32 AWG which was on my microphone, and that stuff is annoying to work with. 
like super annoying. And just flux, tin. This one tins nicely. I'm gonna, like, I have a lot of, like, dead, like, like, burning flux now on the pen, so I'm just gonna scrape it off on this GTX 590 heatsink. That's a great use for old heatsinks. If you have a bunch of old heatsinks from something that you're not using, like, a graphics card, this is what to do with them. Use them for your soldering pen. Because they suck up the heat, right? They don't get hot. You can scrape off the just about anything with them. I don't use a, a like, pro, normally people would use a sponge for their soldering. I don't use a sponge. I just have heat sink. And it works just fine. So that's nice. Get some more on here. Tin the other end. This one tins surprisingly well. Okay, no, it doesn't. There, now it does. <laughs> that's because of the ton of flux. Basically, just use a lot of flux. That will make your soldering a lot easier and have a proper tip, proper shape tip. Not well cleaned or something. If it's, if the shape of your tip sucks, your your everything's gonna suck. Like I, I tried to get this tip. What the hell is with the corruption on the stream? Why is this stream corrupting? It's not like this. Is the cable messed up or something? Uh. Uh. 